Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Johnny's Journey through Pokemon Unite Ranked Ladder. My name is Tony Four, and I hope you have a good time today. Well, I finally bought Lapras, so let's show that off. And I want to play Lapras today, so I, there's no obtain anymore here. You are finally able to play Lapras on Ranked. So we will be sticking with the same build where we have. NG Amplifier, Shell Bell XP Share for support and cooldown reduction. We'll see how that goes. As we keep moving on through this series, we'll experiment with different builds, experiment with different playstyles with each character. But for this episode, we're going to play Lapras with that cooldown reduction sort of build. So let's go on matchmaking and see what happens. All right, all right, all right, we have a Decidueye Mewtwo. This is Mewtwo X, I think, as the all-rounder. We will be playing Lapras. We're going to be going to the top path. And we'll be confirming from there. Uh, Crazy Bobo, the Charizard, seems to be a beginner, as well as Uniqlo, the Absol. Seems to be a beginner since they only have leftovers. So let's see what happens next. We do have a Square Shield Decidueye, which is a bit weird. And a Weakness Policy Muscle Band, Focus Band Mewtwo, which is also a bit... Which is quite good actually, now that I think about it. But the Square Shield Decidueye is a bit strange to me. Let's see what happens next. We have Charizard, Lola Ninetales, Masquerada, Buzzwell, Pikachu and the other team. Let's see whether any of them are in a team of their own. This might be real people, I don't know. This doesn't really tell me much, does it? Okay, let's head out. We will be picking up Whirlpool. This seems to be a real people match. Our Charmander has been left behind in the base. So, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good way to start this match. Okay, let's make sure that we're giving our Mewtwo all the stats or all the experience that is that's my bad just as i say that i immediately failed to give our youtube that experience let's make sure we get ice shard charmander is now followed to the bottom lane axel is in the top lane meanwhile we have our first game with a proper farm with youtube getting that experience start harassing this Vulpix. You two should be able to easily defeat this Vulpix. You should be able to bully this quite well. However, I am about to get KO'd so I'm going to be falling back. Yep, that's completely my fault. I did not notice my HP bar. Okay. We did get the revenge KO on Charmander though, so that's good. Our Mewtwo should be doing quite well. Especially with the experience lead from KOing two of their uh, Pokemon. Charmander got KO'd. Dalga got KO'd. Uh, Florigato got KO'd. So lots of KOs here in this in this match. Let's make sure that you two maintains that level lead by sticking to them as they farm. Okay. Charmander's back in our lane. Very nice. I'll make sure that they cannot get to our Mewtwo. And make sure that we are still getting all the experience from this lane. I don't really mind being the lowest experience on our team since we do have experience share, so that gains us a little bit more XP. So my my role here is to make sure that our Me Too is getting as strong as possible. Mewtwo is already a very strong character, but 
if I can get them to a high enough level, then they would just be unstoppable. So army is now at level 8, which is very nice. Everyone's at bottom though, so everyone's getting pushed back. U2 is wisely heading there. I need to stay here, I think. Make sure that Charmander is unable to really take advantage of U2 being missing from up top. So we are using the waterfalls with the cooldown reduction to make sure that we are able to bully this Charmander. Okay, very nice. He's just heading down bot. Um, Absol got KO. Okay, probably shouldn't be staying here up top, but Charmander is here, so I don't really mind. I'm basically gonna make sure this Charmander never really gets going and basically stay the Charmander. Because if we are able to maintain this level advantage up top, and keep defending up top. We should be able to stay here and keep it strong, whatever the other team does. However, I do believe it's time for us to join the bottom lane. See what happened. What's happening there? We have Buzzwall and Charmander following our team, so I'm gonna follow them. That's a KO on the Charizard. Let's make sure that this Charmeleon regrets their decision of chasing after our team. Let's get a Unite move. This Buzzwool is in the wrong place. So let's KO them. I will soon head back up to the, to the, top, to the top lane and restore the position that we, that we used to be in. Maybe help this the Y as well. Okay, let's make sure that the pseudo is getting all the XP from here. There's no one here up top, so that's good for us. And also, um, this seems like a razor deep pseudo wire just based on the just based on the sound effects. I'm gonna be escorting this pseudo Y over to the next tier. I would wait for Regieleki to get there. But it seems that we're going to be heading there uncontested, so that's very nice. Okay. So I'll just make sure this is the Y keeps getting all the experience. Supporting them too, every Pokemon, every wild Pokemon, Pikachu got KO'd, so... We should win this easily. Okay, now they KO on... Uh, they KO on wild Pokemon, this time we have Alola Ninetales on us. As expected, the Sidui is falling back. So that's as expected. I'm gonna be heading out over here. And I went in the wrong direction. So that's my fault. I basically got both myself and the Sidui KO'd. So that's my bad. Should have used my Unite to escape and gotten Sidui with me. So now. I think I would stay up top still. No, everyone's at bottom. So let's head out. Let's head out there. I should have decent cooldown reduction on my Unite move. Because of my uh energy amplifier. That's a Unite move on Pikachu. That's a waste of a Unite move for them. Let's make sure that we are still bullying this Charmeleon. But I was too low HP. Um, Nappers is quite a tanky Pokemon, however, I'm not playing that well, it seems. Okay, let's head back out of the bottom. Make sure we're still defending this. Okay, I guess it's Buzz Wall. He's level 11. Okay. Let's make sure we're still healing up as much as we can. However, that's three Pokemon there. Mewtwo might do well here, but we're not expecting much. Because there there is three over there. Okay. Charizard is up top. It's probably not a good idea for me to just 
keep hinting down the bottom lane so I'm just gonna push down this way and use that as a, as a springboard point and let's make sure this uh, Mouse Pilata gets KO'd let's make sure Pikachu gets KO'd okay I'm gonna potion just to heal back up Let's get the Asperada. Let's get Ice Beam. Okay. Wow, I got killed by Masquerada. I I guess I was hitting the wrong one. Hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of KOs on my end. But I do have my Unite move for Rayquaza, so that's a good thing. Let's head there as soon as we can. Make sure we are defending Rayquaza. However, it doesn't seem like anyone from the, from the opposing team is here. So let's just focus on making sure that there's fewer of them than there are of us. So, okay, we have Meow Sparada here. Who's level 13, so that's not a good that's not a good engage for me. Buzzwall is at level 13 as well. Okay, let's head out here. Make sure we're helping out our team. Okay. Um, have to fall back from Absol, uh, from the Asperada here. And we might have lost this game out of our lead. <laughs> because Mewtwo is scoring. Charizard is alone. We're gonna have to watch that later on in our analysis. Mm, I'm not sure whether it was a good idea for Mewtwo to just go ahead and score. At this point, our team should be focusing on defending the Equaza, making sure that is not that, that, that exact thing does not happen. Because <laughs> now, what's going to happen is we we will be forced to defend all of our goal zones. This, this doesn't, as far as this, this is not the real Masquerada. Yep. Pikachu is up top, just scoring with uh, uncontested. That's bad. Yes, Gratis has 50. Yeah, we're just stuck here with no real purpose. But we did distract them long enough to not score. You see Joy trying to back up, but unable to score in time. Okay, this will be quite the interesting match to watch. Did we win? We did, did win. Okay. Whoa. So we played as that press and we won. So just in terms of our team composition, having Bluetooth definitely helps. I don't think I supported our Bluetooth that well, but it wasn't too bad either. So having the lowest experience in the team is fine, I think. Um, I don't really mind having those experience as, as Pokemon with XP share, however, what was a mistake on my end was giving the enemy team lots of KOs, especially giving this Charizard lots of KOs. So we're going to save this replay. I do not want to give any Mewtwo the MVP award, but they did do better than expected. Um, especially with the back cap at the end, I'm probably going to give uh thumbs up to Ab Nico the Absol. Let's see. Uh can I do this? Yep. And to Sijoi as well. Or I wonder if there's a way to okay. yep. seems like it seems like many people. Read battle report as well. So we did maintain a lead up to up to the very end that's very nice let's close that let's look at battle data i should have had the most recovery so that's good damage taken is also a lot as well however it's not good in the sense that i was really getting in the face of my opponents without having a build that is more conducive or that is better suited to tanking a lot of hits 
that's that's probably not good. Should have been focused on being somewhere in the middle, hitting my water pulses, hitting my ice beams. But anyway. With that, we are now in grade class three. And now move, moves up in the ranks. With one more of those, one more diamond. Okay. So head back to the main menu and rewatch that game. Okay, so once, once again, we have the CDY, we need to Charizard, Lapras, Absol against Charizard, Lula, Ninetales, Gasparado, Buzzwall, and Pikachu. This is my first time playing against the Buzzwall. Seems quite the strong character. I'm hard to deal with, from what I can tell. But we're going to learn from this match how we could possibly play around a Buzzwall. So just based on... Movement patterns, this seems like a real game. Absol heading up, up, uh, up to the central area. Rowlet heading on the bottom area. And Charmander for some reason staying there. Staying there in our base. Meanwhile, we have Vulpix and Charmander up top. We have uh, Spigatito in the middle. And Buzzwall and Pikachu at the bottom path. So we already had, we, we immediately have a deficit experience just because of Charmander being left behind there. Might have had some reason to not push forward immediately. But Rowlet somehow able to get in a score there despite there being two or three of the enemy team. Meanwhile, this is where I get my, uh, I get my first KO or get KO'd immediately. Because I was not paying attention to my health bar. Look at me pushing forward, trying to tank for this Mewtwo, even though I probably shouldn't. Even though I likely should have been paying more attention to my health. And uh, despite having a potion, not being able to tank all those hits. Thankfully, Mewtwo is strong enough to just beat these Pokemon 1-on-1 -on -one or 2-on-1. -on -one. Mewtwo, uh, Mewtwo is just that strong of a character that... With just a level lead, an easy defeat, two or three enemy Pokemon. Absol also getting a uh, KO on Florigato, that's nice. Pikachu's trying to hit this Altaria, it's probably not good. Anyway, I am now back up here trying to help out our Mewtwo get even more level lead. We now have we now have Ninetales, Buzzwool, and uh, Florigato. Here in the middle, which seems a bit odd to me. They're leaving behind Pikachu here at the bottom lane to try and defend B. While there are three on the enemy team just in the central area. They might be might be rotating. Seems like they are, but it seems weird to me that they would go through that way. Nine Tails attacking the Silgor as well. It's not good for our uh opposing Florigato. So it's not like we're playing well. Is that on both sides of the map, there are people playing suboptimally, let's, let's just say. But at this point, we have the entire enemy team, as far as I can tell, either in their base or at the bottom of the map. So they're very quickly pushing down this bottom side of the map. Uh, yeah, I'm here two level four Pokemon and Charmander and Rowlet trying to defend against some level five, which is not good. Being outnumbered and outleveled, so I am expecting this goal zone to get get broken. Meanwhile, this top zone is very vulnerable thanks to our level seven U2 and me trying to support. So we are actually doing fine up top and in the middle. Absol is now heading down to the bottom as far as I can tell. Or are they just getting buffs? Seems like they're just getting buffs. How are Rowlet and Charmander doing? Charmander has just evolved. However, yeah, they would get KO'd, both of them. Unless Rowlet's able to escape. Seems like seems like it. But that was an easy score for the opposing team. 
Meanwhile, I decide to stay up top to make sure that Charmander doesn't get up in levels. Because Charmander is an all round that can get snowballing very quickly as well. Absol and Mewtwo should definitely be heading bottom to help out our Rowlet. Where is Mewtwo heading? Mewtwo is just farming still. It's a bit weird considering he's the highest, uh, they're the highest level on our team. They finally head down after getting that ball tour. But it's now too late since Absol got KO'd. They should get Nascarada. And not to sure Rowlet gets KO'd, so. Just in terms of rotation, I would say that Absol and Mewtwo should have gotten there much earlier when both Rowlet and Charmina were still alive. That said, our Rowlet has stayed at Rowlet for so long, so that's a bit odd for me. It's a bit strange that we still have a level 4 in both sides of the map at this point. We already uh, past 3 minutes into the match. I am fighting level 4 Charmander. This is still level 4 Rowlet. That's a bit strange to me. Okay, Absol's heading down to the bottom. As they should. Rowlet's heading down to the bottom. As they should. Rowlet finally evolved Gartrix. They should definitely be giving Gartrix as much experience as possible. And not taking a... Gartrix should be choosing their... Fights wisely make to make sure that they are getting lots of, lots of experience. At this point, I am very much alone at top. I have just broken this tier 1. No one has fought Reggie Alecki just yet, so I decided to head down bottom. I think this is a wise choice. Considering that, in hindsight, considering that Florida got, oh, Masperada is here at the bottom. Uh, here at the top, rather, just farming at level 8. That's good. Um, they're not actively pushing at the moment, so that's fine for me. Meanwhile, we have this still Charmander. Isn't this sad? <laughs> we have a Charmander still. On the, on the opposing team, however, we have a Charizard on our team. Charmander should be able to evolve soon because Charmander evolves at level 5 and into Charizard at level 7. And that's just sad to see. Okay, what else What else can you observe here? You have Absol who's in a precarious position against Ninetales and Pikachu. Level advantage should help a lot, however, both Ninetales and Pikachu could do a lot of damage and have a lot of CC. Seems that Buzzwool is about to attack our Charizard. That's a bad thing for our Charizard. And so Charmander should be able to defeat that Charizard and get lots of levels. There we go. There's a level of the Charmeleon. I, as a Lapras, should be able to get rid of this Charmeleon, however. Is Mia's Parod against anyone at the moment? Not at the moment. Where is our Decidueye going? They seem to be heading up top. Realizing that there's no one up top. Um, as a Sidoi, I don't feel like the Razor Leaf is good in this kind of battle, this regular kind of battle in Standard or Rant. Simply because Sidoi doesn't really have that kind of mobility to stay close and uh, deal damage from the right amount of distance. I do think the Spirit Shackle might be the better better move there. Quick look at the levels. Charizard and Sijuai are still quite low. Meanwhile, Alula Ninetales and Charmina are quite low on the opposing team as well. Buzzwole is easily their highest level Pokemon. Meanwhile, our side we have Absol. We have Absol and Mewtwo. Okay, positioning wise, how are we? Um, our position seems better, in my opinion. Simply because we do have Pokemon on every part of the map. However, Charizard and Lapras probably aren't the best jungle duo in the game. I am not planning on sticking around in the central area. Getting up top to our city wide. We have a small fight here. 
Mewtwo might get KO'd. Mewtwo gets away. Absol gets a KO on Pikachu. Tries to get Meowth but hits the clone instead. Let's see how this goes. This is the real Meowth Sparada. No, it's not. Meowth Sparada gets a KO on our Absol. Which gives them a good chunk of experience as well. Meanwhile, Reg uh, Lapras and Sidiwai get Regilecki. Ninetales is trying to stay in the central area, it seems. It's strange to me that they have no set pieces in the central area, the enemy team. Okay. This is just a crazy moment around here. Just looking at this screen, I'm guessing Charizard gets KO'd. Get left alone by our two highest levels who are both in the jungle. Charizard should get converged on by both of these and Pikachu as well. There they go. Oops. They do get the KO on Pikachu instead. They do get the KO on Nascarada as well. And on Buzzwall. So that's what you get when you have Mewtwo and Absol. Two very strong characters. Well, Absol is a bit of a bursty character instead. But when you have two of those characters converging on a lower level enemy team, what happens then is that there's lots of damage and both of them get out relatively unscathed. Now at this point, uh, the Sidoi and I have just scored on this uh, tier 2 go zone. I noticed that this I was able to notice that the Sidoi had fallen back and I should have fallen back as well. However, instead I stick around trying to fight this Ninetales who can still beat me. Especially right next to this gold zone. I should have made sure that we are not fighting next to the gold zone so that we don't have that defender's advantage on the enemy team. And especially with this Fighting in this Aurora Veil. I couldn't have done much with the Buzzwall arriving there. There wasn't much I could do with the Buzzwall arriving. Um, but I definitely should have re retreated a lot earlier. Because that means that the Cedar Wise now is a Sitting Owl. Stuck here alone. Getting KO'd by the Buzzwall. So in terms of score, we're still doing fine. However... In terms of KOs, we are falling back. Charizard trying to beat this Charmeleon. Absol trying to beat this Charmeleon. Get, easily getting that. However, there's now four of them against three of us. I am barely following at this point. Should have been more careful, really. I am now surrounded by three. That's bad. We do uh, Pikachu gets a KO on Absol. And Pikachu is not KO'd, so I try to follow Pikachu, but that, that was a bad choice as well. Charizard almost gets KO'd. I would get KO'd in here, I think, as well. Yep, because that press against Pikachu would be a bit of a even fight, but with the, with the Charmeleon there, that gives them the advantage, and that gives them a lot of experience letting Charmeleon evolve into Charizard. This, that's what I mean when I say I got a lot of bad KOs because I basically gave the enemy team lots of opportunities to catch up. This Sijuai is a no man's land. Bad positioning by them, which leaves me a sitting duck as well against all three of them. Minu which then leaves you two trying to fight alone. You should never really be fighting alone in these kinds of games. But Absol is for some reason trying to score. Charizard might be trying to score. That's a bit strange to me. There is a fight going on, you know. But then again, I was seeing the top lane as well myself, so it's not like I'm doing much better either. They did break those two gold zones though, so that's good. It means less area for them to be able to defend against us. Absol gets healed very quickly and gets KO on Pikachu. That's very nice. 
So, in noticing these rotation mistakes, okay, that's, I'm gonna pause here. In noticing these rotation mistakes, I should be noting my own rotation mistakes as well. I had stayed in top lane for too long, and now I'm staying in bottom lane for too long. I thought mistakenly that I could beat this Miaz Karada, but in hitting the wrong Miaz Karada, I had sealed my fate and get KO'd. That gives their Miaz Karada of the level lead on par now with our Absol and our Mewtwo. Sijuwa is once again in no man's land, probably gonna get KO'd. There you go. Pikachu is heading where at this point? Pikachu is heading some 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 strange place. Okay. Rayquaza has spawned. What is everyone doing? Pikachu is trying to score six full points. That's probably a bad choice there. Decidueye is currently KO'd. Charizard is in our base. Probably about to head back. But we have Absol going to Rayquaza. I am at Rayquaza. Mewtwo is rather close by as well. So, in terms of positioning, we're slightly better, but in terms of numbers, we're slightly worse since we have 4v3 in favor of the opposing team. So, once the opposing team pushes towards Rayquaza, I doubt we'll win that fight, even with both Mewtwo and Absol heading the charge. The Pikachu is just nowhere to be found for this, as far as I can tell. And chase his nine tails, probably not a good idea. But in doing so, I had basically exposed myself quite a lot, made myself very vulnerable. Because I am now in the middle of Buzzwall, in the middle of Buzzwall, Nascarada, and a load of nine tails with Charizard just behind to get that catch up experience. Because I am a higher level than this Charizard. So, at this point, I had single-handedly made our position much worse for our team because that now puts us in a possible 2v4 situation once I get KO'd so that's a very bad move from me so that's Miyaz Karada trying to attack me and literally try to get away so I do get away however this is a bad position for us I try to hit this Buzzwall to help support our Absol. We do get the Buzzwall, however, we still have Nyasperada down here. We get scaled by uh, Absol gets scaled by Nyasperada. Get the wrong one, I think. No, I, that was the right one, but the picture arrives there just in time. And then we have here the Sidrawai catching up, only to get KO'd. I should have paid attention to where Charizard was going. Where is Charizard? There you go. Oh yeah, they were fighting the other Charizard, I guess. That's fine, I think. It's fine to defend. Mewtwo had just scored at this point as well. Which was good to maintain our lead, however... I would have thought that it would be better for them to help us fight at the Rayquaza area. Would have been nice to have me, Absol, and me too in the same battle. But instead, Miyaz is on level 14, being an absolute menace to us. We have Miyaz Karada against me too, with the, with the Rayquaza shield. That, you're hitting the wrong one, guys. Okay. Absol is now no man's land, trying to carry the game. Charizard trying to help them out, but now they're stuck in the 1v3, now 1v4, bye bye Charizard, following them I get KO'd as well. Five, four, three, two, One thing I should check now, Time's up. is did Mewtwo scoring matter? We can easily check the scores, 293 to 421. That's a bit weird. There should be the other way around. Yeah, 423. Mewtwo scoring at the very end did not matter at all. We had enough of a lead that it was fine. Having Mewtwo at the end to fight them 
would have been a much better decision for on their part. But we're not here to blame our misplays on our teammates. We are here to notice our own good plays and our own misplays. So that's it for this episode. I hope you had fun with me. Hope you learned with me what we did well, what we did badly in this game of Pokemon Unite. If you want to see more, please do feel free to subscribe. But for now, the grind upwards continues. Goodbye, everyone.